I'm Dylan from Slain Americas and I finally get to sit down where we've been doing the grand opening and Rafa, my friend Rafa from CMC is here and it's really nice to be sitting. We thought we would take a couple of minutes and just talk about the relationship that we have with between CMC and Celine Americas and Celine Jet Turn, the shipyard. And then a little bit, uh, I'm gonna let Rafa talk to, uh, talk to you all about why we use electric stabilizers and the benefits. So great. yeah, so Rafa. First welcome. of all, thanks for having me here. It's been a week at Celine. I see every boat, I met the dealer. I really learned about the Celine family and, and style and business and, uh, and market and everything. It's very, very valuable because when a supplier can know so much about their customer yep. yard, it's much easier to do the right job, propose the right product and and work with them. And, um, and one of the things that we're really working at at Celine is not having suppliers, it's having relationships. So uh, Raf is a co-builder. We can't build our boats without the support of all of our suppliers. So going past a supplier relationship into this co-builder relationship is really important to us, as, as you know. Because Rafa has a lot of my phone calls very late at night he takes. Yeah, yeah. But I call back to ask questions to Dylan. And especially when the customer call directly me and say, oh, can I have this size? Can I have this model? Can I have this other thing? I say, hey, Dylan, what do you think? What are we going to do? Do we customize to that mm -hmm. level? Or, or we try to keep some sort of standard? But uh, the stabilizer is a critical piece of equipment. And correct if I'm wrong, goes in the boat fairly early as impact on the design because the interior space needs to allow for the space of the yeah. Sevillara. Even ours are very compact, but still you have to, the way the the, 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 the old electrical boxes and something, you need to plan for that early on. You cannot just, uh, we do refits in the market too, but it's way more impactful than installing on first mom. So it's, um, it's, it's something you have to decide early on. So let's have a chat about why we've gone electric. What what are, I mean, you're, you're here. I can tell everybody what I think the reason is, but you're actually yeah. my supplier. So let that, let's work about the advantages of electric versus electric. You're going electric and you're one of the first among the builders, let's say in Asia, the build in Asia for the US market. Uh, Europe is a little ahead of the curve in that sense. Uh, the world has gone electric because, you know, hydraulics are technology goes back from World War II and electric servos are a technology from the 90s. So much newer technology. It's cleaner, more silent, more efficient. So it's it's definitely uh, a perfect fit for the boats. And uh, we, we size, we're really careful on the battery systems to size the boats so the boats can run overnight. And that's one of the things electric really allowed us to do because it's more efficient. We can have a much, well, we, we, have, we already have a massive battery bank, but it's not, uh, it's not even more massive to run the hydraulics. So we're, we're careful on the boats that we can get air conditioning overnight in the master cabin and we can keep the, uh, the stabilizers on the Allen anchor mode in reasonable condition. That's always how long is a piece of string question. But, yeah. but that's what we size the boats for. Yeah. And by the way, we have a, we call it the energy saving mode or whatever yeah. we call it, that allows the stabilizer to last longer at yeah. night if you don't have enough battery. You reduce it a little bit the speed, yeah. but uh, it, can, it can outlast the batteries uh, by 50%. And uh, the, the, the other advantages of the electric stabilizer are uh, from the shipyard standpoint, yeah. installation time, it's much faster. The, the amount of labor required to install electric stabilizer is about 20-30% of a traditional hydraulic yeah. stabilizer. Yeah. We all come from hydraulic. And we see that really translate also into space in the engine rooms. Because we don't have all of this extra hydraulic componentry, we see there's just a, there's a lot more room in the engine room for us. And the other part from the builders is there's a lot of risk with the hydraulic system. So we're we're mitigating our risk with the build with the builder's risk Correct. when we go electric. Correct. The other big change in technology that allows on smaller boats, like mm -hmm. let's call it smaller boats compared to the mega yacht, they're yeah, still yeah. decent sized boats, but uh, is, the, is the evolution that inverters have had the two centuries, yeah. two centuries, the last 20 years, because they are way more efficient. So now we can run a, a highly efficient AC power system on DC power through Victron or yeah. other inverters that are tremendously efficient now. Yeah. So where, that, where our conversion losses are only two or 3%, whereas before, 10-15% conversion loss. I remember when I started in 2001, inverter were like, uh, if you're desperate, you use an inverter. Yeah. Now it's normal. I think this boat has like four or six of them. Four on this one. Or yeah. a Victron Quattro, so it's, uh, that also makes. So now you can run the, uh, the stabilizer both directly from the generator when you're running the generator or from the batteries through the inverter when, and it's a seamless change that automatically senses yeah. if the generator is running or not and it will adapt the, uh, the yeah. function mode. And then you guys also have uh, a more advanced system where we can tie in the rudder with the stabilizers. 
Correct. So uh, we offer our own steering for boats that uh, yep. want fully electric steering. But even if anybody else steering is installed on board, uh, we can interface with autopilot. Uh, what the stabilizer does, it senses what the steering is doing and correct the behavior of the fins to help the steering, particularly yep. take us turn quarter C where it's yep. not as easy to keep the boat straight. Uh, the, the stabilizer ends up working as a auxiliary steering yes. to help the main the main mm -hmm. rudder keep the boat straight and with it, a lot of advantages. I remember this on an old venture flight done that was 150 feet. We'd riff retrofitted the stabilizers. And I remember lots of times we'd be running in a following sea and you'd look down with the rudders would be hard over and the stabilizer would be hard over and it was yeah. locked in. So a lot of our boats being able to actually uh, have the whole system work as one is going right. to be a big advantage. Yeah, yeah, it's not the case of your boats, but on a yeah. small, faster cruiser, like 60, 70 footer cruiser, uh, it's necessary because yeah. the, the, those boats are typically naturally unstable. Yep. And on those sea condition, without coordinating steering and, and stabilizer, the boat would be really rocky. Despite with the biggest stabilizer you can think of, will still not be that stable. And then let's um, let's move a little bit to maintenance on these systems. Okay. So let's talk about, so now we have all, we've, the owners decided they want CMC, which is our uh, our current yard choice. And we're years down the road. What is the maintenance on this particular fin? So again, compared to hydraulic, it's paradise. It's, uh, I, I'm sorry for my company because we don't make a lot of revenues out of, out of aftermarket, but it's very little to do. We recommend changing the, the seals uh, yep. every, we say couple years. It's extremely conservative. Yeah. Uh, we know both to do it every three, four, five years, and it's still fine. But, yeah. you know, it's like shaft seal. You want to be safe. You don't want to take a potential risk of yeah. leakage. Have I seen a boat uh, sinking because of the seals of a uh, never, ever? But we like to be safe and, and uh, in that okay. So that's the only one, essentially. On bigger units, uh, I'm talking about over 100 feet boats, yeah. so we change the bearings every five, six feet. But this is an integrated the bearing with transmission. It's a compass system, so you don't really have to do that. No. So unless you have a, so what a is lightning life, striking. Uh, what is the lifespan of the bearing on this unit? It's it's lifelong because it's built in. Yeah. Uh, it's a special Mitsubishi product that they sells under another name, but yeah. it's, it's Mitsubishi really. And it's an integrated uh, planetary gear and, yeah. uh, and rotary motor, servo motor as, as a built-in. Uh, One unit. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I remember with there's the no really hydraulic. separatable bearing or, or roller yeah. bearing. To with the old hydraulic units, we were constantly replacing the bearings on the ram ends. Yeah. That was a big wear item. Or the other day I was here and somebody asked me, do we need to bleed the system before? <laughs> I said, no, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing to be bled uh, in, the, in the system. That There's no really other maintenance unless something goes wrong. Or The most common maintenance is replacing fin when the captain or owner makes it's not paying attention and hits the bottom or yeah. or uh, or hits a dock or but even that is unlikely because we have a dock mode that reduces the angle yeah. of the of the of fins uh, in proximity or something right now you have to manually select dock mode when yeah. you get close to a dock but in the future with the auto mode the system will automatically even sense uh, uh, the proximity we're trying to make it as automatic as we can so we have a similar theory, right? So our theory at Celine is we want to minimize the user input into the boat. We want the boat to know when it has a problem Correct. and tell the owner when it has a problem. What we want the boat to be able to do as many transition changes as it can do on its own just with selecting Correct. the right system. Now, the owner is still free to yeah. shut off the system or, or to change what it's doing, but we want him to minimize the the effort required to the owner to yeah. control and optimize the behavior of the system. And, and the reason we do that is we're trying to reduce the workload. So a lot of these boats are run by a couple uh, highly fatigued because they probably haven't slept in a couple days. Especially these yeah. kind of intermediate sized boats where... Yeah. So let's talk about, we're going to talk about the seal on this one. So I'm going to stand up. So you can see on this boat, um, to drop the fin is quite easy. Uh, these are just Allen headed screws. So what, one, two, three, four, five. So we have ten, five aside. So we undo all these. My fin drops away, correct? Correct. Yeah. And then I can see the seal here. We've got a retaining ring. So I undo the retaining ring. Correct. Right? And then I'm going to pull the seal out with a seal puller. Change there, you replace all the screws because they're all, they need to be locked in with Loctite. Right. You don't want the fin to be able to unscrew with vibrations. Right. So that's also kind of important. The, um, the advantage of the small, say the compact series fins is that there's yeah. no shaft. 
yep, there's a built-in structure, but it's going to the end of the thing. So it's much easier to remove and start a bigger, bigger system. They have uh, full shafts, so removing you need an hydraulic pump and pressure yep. to remove the fins. So these are extremely easy. So these 10 bolts, drop the fin, drop the retaining ring, pull the seal out. Correct. When I buy the new seal from you, it's going to come with a kit with seal and new bolts. Correct. The, you told me the retaining ring acts as a seal driver, so I put my new seal in. Start spring the retaining ring. That's going to push the seal up into the place. It's uh, a half a day operation. Yep. So and really these are not at end. You don't need a uh, oh, forklift. Just yeah. the two people can really handle this uh, this fin. Awesome. It's all fiberglass and carbon fiber. So we love carbon. Fairly fairly easy. No, especially on this range of boats yeah. where you said right. The, the captain is the owner. The owner yeah. is the captain. So there's no. Although I see on the on the 64 you have a crew cabin in the back, mm -hmm. but even Jim is just. Yeah, captain in his own uh, his own boat. Awesome. I think I think that's all we have to talk about today. That's uh, until I present you the for the news because so we just presented an energy recovery system at Camp Show and there's still stuff. Uh, and we're we're currently working together to with a new steering system for the boats. So we need to talk a lot. Continue innovating. We're an engineering company, so always thinking forward. I think it's time for lunch. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan.